Welcome to It's Your Turn. I'm Brenda Florida, Certified Life Coach, and no matter how exhausted, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed you are, there is hope. You can start exactly where you are. There's nothing wrong with you. In fact, you're ready for it to be your turn or you wouldn't be here. You know, we hear words like vitality and confidence and empowerment and transformation, but what do they really mean? What do they look like in the practical aspects of our life? In the It's Your Turn podcast, we explore, learn, and put into practice practical tools and wise concepts for transformation. This is real life change, not platitudes. It's the intersection of the practical and the aspirational. It's your turn to make decisions that are aligned with exactly what you want. And if you've lost connection to what you want, that's okay, we'll reconnect it. You'll learn how to shift out of self-sabotaging patterns and tap in to the clarity, confidence, and vitality that you may feel like has been lost forever. It's your turn to step into the driver's seat of your life and embrace the power that is within you. So let's get to it. Well, this may be one of my favorite episodes of It's Your Turn. (laughs) Our topic today is how to say no. I mean, one could start with why is it so hard? But it is, especially for anybody who is sensitive, empathetic, has challenges with people-pleasing habits, any of those things. Saying no can be really challenging. And I think I want to start our conversation today with sort of exploring that. Like, why is it so hard? And why is it also so important to learn how to do it? So one of the reasons it's very hard is that our culture, especially for women, is based on the foundation of it is in our servanthood, okay? And what I mean by that is an attitude of service. And of course, for many people, actual literal servanthood is their history. And for the for others of us, it's a little more um, of a, feeling it's a little more of an expectation that we're going to be giving 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 than actually having to be someone's servant but whatever it is there's that cultural impression there's the cultural habit of assuming especially women people of color are going to play that role of being in service. And so we have like this whole, I mean, patriarchies and capitalism, good God, are based on that, you know? And so it's, there's a lot of reprogramming we have to get over, you know, get through in or in order to free ourselves from the disempowerment of servanthood. Now, let me just make one little distinction here. I think there's a way of which being in service, doing good things for other people, like that's a beautiful thing. But I think you all know exactly what I'm talking about when we get to the dark side of that, where there's an assumption that of course you're going to do this. Of course you should. Like look at the invisible workload of women and I'm sure most of you, all of you probably know what that is, but it's that that role that women end up taking on without asking for it, without being asked for it of just like, oh, well, I know all the kids, you know, doctor's phone numbers. I do all the appointments. I buy the birthday gifts. I wrap the gifts for everybody, whether it's, you know, your spouse's family or your family or whatever, you know. And there's just all these things, the grocery list in your head or whatever it is, there's all these things that women particularly take on as 
in a very unspoken way of just that's what we're supposed to do it's like we're supposed to do the laundry or we're supposed to do the cooking or whatever it is and maybe those aren't the things in your family it could be something very different maybe your spouse does all the cooking but you end up having to take care of all these other things and instead of them being a conscious choice of these are the ways I want to contribute to our household these are the ways you want to you know where are the gaps you know blah blah there's an assumption around it. And so we have to start undoing this capitalistic patriarch patriarchy mindset of just assuming we have to. Okay. So that that's one way it gets ingrained in us. The other way is for ev anyone who's had any sort of, you know, dysfunction around alcoholism, any kind of addiction any kind of addiction, whether it's substance or an addiction to work or whatever it is, and has these tendencies of people pleasing, doing for others, not rocking the boat, you know, not speaking up for yourself, all those kinds of habits that we get in to keep harmony in our homes that we probably started doing when we were little children, right? Then that makes saying no even harder, right? Because that was our job. I mean, as a child, we weren't saying no to taking care of adult issues in the family. I was revisiting some stories from my childhood the other day with my sisters. And I mean, it was so screwed up. Now, I didn't think anything of it at, at the time. And, and some of like the story I'm thinking of right now was when I was a teenager I was about 14 and my parents were divorcing and my mom was, my parents were fighting a lot. My dad had left my mom for a younger woman. And so she was of course very wounded and all those things, but she would actually, when my dad would call, you know, it's way before caller ID, right? So if she answered the phone and it was my dad, she would hand the phone to me as a 14 year old and have me talk to him and see what he wanted. And then she'd tell me what she wanted me to say back to him and blah, blah. I mean, so dysfunctional. At the time, it never occurred to me as a teenager to say no to my mother. I'm not going to do this. You talk to dad. Okay. Never would have occurred to me. By then I was already deeply entrenched in my good girl, be a good girl, be a good Christian girl, be loving and wonderful to your mother. She's having a hard time all these messages that were already so deeply ingrained in me, because like I didn't even touch on the religious thing there in servanthood. Um, but I had all of that too, and maybe some of you can relate to that. And so I would have never said no to my mother about those things. And I wouldn't, if somebody had asked me, you know, if you stepped into my 14 year old life and said, mm, Brenda, like maybe you shouldn't have to do that. Like maybe you should have your mom take care of it. I would have had all kinds of reasons why that wasn't the case. I can handle it. It's okay. My mom's going through enough. This is a way I can help her. I could have made all that sound really good. Okay. And so I want you to know that whatever the reasons are that end up sort of talking you into saying yes to more things than you want to say yes to, there, you know, kind of like it's not your fault. I mean, ultimately we have to be responsible for whatever we're doing, but like all the reasons that got put into place were not because of you. They were things going on around you and how you coped with the situation, but you don't have to stay in that trap anymore. You can come out of that messaging, come out of that conditioning and choose something different for yourself. And that's really the difference between being empowered, feeling empowered to say no, and not feeling empowered to say no. Because even if we put shiny, glossy reasons on it, I like helping people and I, you know, I want to help my mom and those are shiny, glossy reasons. The truth is underneath all that, I didn't feel like I could say no. I felt like I had to do that for my mom. So we won't get into a deep podcast on the dynamics of codependency here, but all of us have different things that are like that where we don't, we don't, or we didn't feel like we had a choice 
So we may not associate that with being disempowered, but every time you feel like you don't have a choice, that is disempowering, okay? So why is saying no so, so, so important beyond escaping these um, patterns of dysfunction and finding an, our own inner sense of power in order to do it? It's that every time you say yes, you are saying no to something else. So I almost wish we could even just kind of start with every time somebody asks us to do something or an opportunity presents itself that we're deciding whether or not to say yes to or no to, if we could just think about it that way, wait a minute, if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? Because you are saying no to something, even if it's something fun, like, you know, stopping and having drinks on your way home from work or going out with the girls or whatever it is. When you say yes to that, you're saying no to something else. Now, sometimes we want to say no to that something else, right? Maybe something else is going home and cooking dinner and you don't want to do that. So cool. Say yes to that one. But it's possible that even though the thing you're being invited to do is fun, that saying yes to that means saying no to time to yourself to maybe hit the yoga mat or read a book or soak in the hot tub or whatever it is that would just be calming to your own nervous system, right? Just daily life and what's going on in the world gets our nervous system wound up. And we need time each day to allow that energy to re be released from our body whether it's something in movement you know it doesn't have to be aerobic exercise you know it can be 15 or 20 minutes I love somatic yoga uh, sessions that are on YouTube somatic is s-o-m-a no s-o-m-o matic m-a-t-i-c I think, but you, you search it on YouTube, you'll find a million of them. And I love them because they're very slow. They're super easy. And most of them are only like 15 to 30 minutes. So you, you, this is not to work up a sweat. Somatic yoga is specifically designed to release the energy that gets caught up in our body from the stress of everyday life. And from trauma, if we want to go, you know, bigger, deeper into it, but we won't do that on today's episode. Um, but that's what it came out of was a gentleman, Peter Levine, who is, I don't know, a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever he is, um, and did a lot of research and study on trauma and release, allowing ourselves to release the effects of trauma because, you know, we can't stop it. It already happened. But trauma takes a sort of permanent hold on our body if we don't go and do something about it it can be you can be doing something about it 50 years after it happened it doesn't matter in that regard time doesn't matter um but but we need to do it and every day we have stresses that build up in our body we're so used to it we don't even think about it but they're there. And so doing a super simple, you know, 15 or 30 minute yoga practice will do wonders for that release for your body to recover from the day. And so, you know, I'm not, of course, I love going out with my girlfriends or going out and having a drink after work or whatever. So sometimes sure that yes is great, but maybe not every time. So if we could just sort of turn our thinking into, wait a minute, when I say yes to this, or I'm volunteering to help at the animal shelter, or I'm volunteering to do this community thing, or that church thing, or something at my kid's school, or whatever it is, a charity that my, the, my workplace supports. You know, every time we say yes, even though those are all awesome, awesome causes, awesome, awesome things to do. And giving back all is a mood booster, you know, in and of itself, but not in the absence of self-care. And so when I say yes to that charity or that community thing, even though it's a quote unquote good deed for them, doesn't mean it's a good deed for me. 
when I say yes to that and the time and energy and maybe money that that's going to take, what am I going to end up saying no to? And is that really what I want to do? Is that yes worth the no's? Now, of course, the opposite is true. When I say no to something, I'm saying yes to something else. I'm allowing something else to be done, to be experienced, to, you know, I don't care if it's taking a nap. So you look at it either way that works for you, but I think it's sometimes more interesting to say, wait a minute, what am I potentially making myself say no to when I say yes to this other thing? It's a way to take your power back. Every time we're in consciousness instead of the program, the program of always being the good girl, the program of always being the one with the servant heart, you know, the one who always says yes, the one who keeps harmony in the family and, you know, doesn't make waves and all those things. We are disempowering ourselves. As soon as we are in that habit, as soon as we are in that program, we are disempowered because the habit is taking over instead of a conscious choice. And power is always in the conscious choice. And no, it doesn't always work out. And sure, there are times that I decide to say, yes to yoga and no to going out for drinks. And later, I really wish I had gone out for drinks. <laughs> okay. But that's okay. Because I made an empowered choice. And it's okay to look back on it and, and kind of learn your own tools of discernment for, oh, actually, tonight, the social, like being with friends would have actually been better with me, for me, than being alone on my yoga mat or you know, when I had kids, you know, home with kids bouncing off my yoga mats, whatever. Um, so that's okay. Being empowered doesn't mean we never make a mistake or wish we had done something different, whatever, however you want to think of that. Being empowered means I'm consciously choosing now based on what I know now, what I'm feeling now. I want to be out of my program and be in to my inner guidance, like tune into my inner guidance and see if I can get some sense of whether this is something to say yes or no to. And then after I do that, I can evaluate that. And that that's all very empowered. Please don't ever confuse like empowerment with meaning. I always think I've done everything right. I always feel like I went left when I should have gone left instead of right. No, we look back and we go, oh, fuck, you know, I, now, in hindsight, I wish I had done that differently. That's okay. It's doing things that we're not thinking about, that we're doing just out of the habit of them that create disempowerment or things that we're doing because we've just been conditioned to always do that way. And we just subconsciously are acting and behaving in ways that we've been pre-programmed for. So what I want you to know today is that you can give yourself permission to change the course of this, to go from saying yes all the time to saying no, to being able to choose and realize, oh, wait, if I say yes to this, that means I'm going to take away something I wanted to do for myself. And maybe that's just rest. Maybe it's having an evening to binge Netflix, whatever. It doesn't have to be super quote unquote noble or, you know, grandstanding. It's just something for you. Maybe it's even, you know, you wanted to get some errands done tonight because of other things you've chosen for later in the week. And if you get behind on those errands, then something else is going to have to budget at the end of the week. And so I'm going to say no to this thing that does sound fun, but I know it, 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 when I take it all into consideration, I'm going to feel better if I go ahead and get these errands done tonight. Like self-care can look all kinds of ways, but the way you know you did it is that you feel better afterwards. <laughs> so that a lot of people will ask me like, well, what, you know, really like what self-care, self-love, like, how do you know if you're doing it? I don't want you to do any of this in any kind of prescripted way because I told you so, or because you know, I have this six step formula to self care or whatever. Nobody knows better than you. But the problem is we stopped asking ourselves a lifetime ago, most of us, 
I never used to ask myself what it was I needed. Like not in a real way, not in a serious way, not in the way I would ask a friend and really care and want them to think about it. What do you need? What can I do to help you? We don't usually ask that for ourselves. So you could ask yourself what you need and not really come up with anything, <laughs> right? Because when nobody's ever asked you that, when you've never asked yourself that, you don't know the answer. So maybe what you need to say no to is something so that you can say yes to, you know, let me just spend some time with myself on my back porch or, you know, in nature somewhere and ask myself, what do I need right now? Do I need to sleep? Do I need to go for a walk? Do I need to read a book? Do I need a nap? Oh, I said sleep. There you go. Sleep twice. Um, Because most of us need to sleep a hell of a lot more than we do. Um, But whatever it is, like, then that's the work of it is I don't even know what I need. So let me go find out what I need. Let me start tuning into myself. Let me start. I trust you. I promise you that if you start tuning into your own body, like just sit in a chair or you can stand, whatever you want to do, sit on a rock in nature, you know, whatever it is. And start tuning into your own body. Where where are you feeling tension? Where is there anywhere that feels relaxed? What does your belly feel like, right? Is it all tied up in a knot? Are your shoulders in a knot? Do you have a headache? Do you, you know, whatever. Like just start tuning into the sensations of your body. And then you might just like touch yourself super gently. Like just take your fingertips on, you know, your arm or, you know, maybe your leg, however you're sitting that it's easy for you and just tune into what does it feel like to feel my hand, my fingertips lightly touching my body. Even if, even if you have clothes on, you know, sleeves or pants or whatever, it's okay. Do it, you know, enough pressure that you can feel it. But especially if your skin is bare, just that real light touch, super light touch, like barely there. Oh, what does that feel like? And does that allow me to start relaxing? As simple as that sounds, that can be very life-changing because our body is our best advisor. It knows when it's stressed. It knows when it's relaxed. It knows what it needs. It's just that sort of like if you were a little kid and you were in a super dysfunctional home and nobody ever asked you what you wanted or needed you would kind of stop knowing, right? So then you go somewhere where people love you and they're like, oh, Susie, you know, what do you need? What do you need? We want to do this for you. What What do you want us to do? You wouldn't have the first clue because nobody's ever cared. But you can find it. You try things. Did that feel good? Did this feel better than that? Do I, like, you know, did, did, was this more relaxing? Oh, but then this, you know, walking or movement of some sort, that felt really good in a different way. So you just start tuning into your body for those answers. When we take care of ourselves, when we say yes to the things that really feel like things we want to say yes to and no to the things that feel like things we want to say no to, that is creating the snowball effect of empowerment. Like empowerment's not exactly an on off switch it's more like it's always available to us all the time all the empowerment possible is available to us all the time but we're not used to tapping into it and so like step by step by step we start using our power and then that starts to build momentum and it's like oh yeah I like the way it feels and you know look, they didn't even get upset when I said no, or they got upset, but they got over it or whatever, you know, and, and it builds that momentum that allows you to access more and more of your power because it is always there all the time for you. You don't have to, you don't have to cultivate the power. You only have to cultivate using it, right? Like I have power running through my apartment. You have power running through your house, but if you never turn the lights on, I mean, who cares that it's all there, (laughs) but it's all there. You could go from using no power in your home, unplug all the appliances, all the, you know, electronics, turn off all the lights. You're not using any power 
it's all still there. And you could plug in one thing at a time and that's fine. Or you could just go plug it all in at once and all the power is there. You're not going to overload it, right? And so that's sort of how we are. Like all that power, all your truth, it's all there all the time. We just got trained out of using it. We just got trained to keep the lights off, so to speak, in my electric electricity in your home metaphor, um, to keep the lights off all the time. Like it was scary to turn the lights on. And so like, you don't know what'll happen. What if I turn the light on? I kind of want to, I want to see what I've heard other people do it, but I don't really know what's going to happen. That's what empowerment is like. <laughs> That's what saying no is like. Like once you start, sure, it can be scary at first because you don't know what to expect. And some people may not like it. When I started saying no, oh my gosh, did some people get mad at me? or get disappointed in me or whatever. And that was hard for me to take, that's true. But I got the benefits of starting to take care of myself. I got the benefits of what the yeses meant when I said no to something else. So I wanna know today, you can drop it in the comments wherever you got this podcast, You know, Spotify, iTunes, wherever, Podbean, wherever it is. Or you can DM me on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm Brenda Florida Coach. You can DM me there or drop a comment in the post about the uh, podcast, like whatever, whatever is easy for you. I just want to know, what do you, are you going to say no to? Like, what's a thing that's kind of right in front of you? And I, I don't care if it's tiny, you could say no to packing your kid's lunch and let them pack their own lunch. I don't, you know, I don't care. I want to know what you're going to say no to. Just pick out one thing that you're going to say no to so that you can say yes to something for yourself. And bonus points, if you know what you're going to do, what your own yes is, like, so I'm, I'm going to say no to this thing and I'm going to go take a nap or I'm going to read a book or I'm going to go take a walk out in nature. Like, if you know what your yes is going to be, tell me that too. That'll be extra fun. Uh, but I really want you to challenge yourself. And if you think you can't say no to anything going on in your life, tell me that if you want, you know, I hope, hopefully that doesn't feel too uh, vulnerable. Um, and I promise you, we can find something that you can say no to because we all have, for the most part, way too many yeses in our lives that keep us from ourselves, that keep us from knowing who we are, from knowing we have all that power within us from following our dreams or even feeling like we can, right? Because once we get into all those conditioned yeses that take us out of our power, then it is like sitting in a dark room thinking there's no electricity. We're just disempowered. We don't think about it that way. We just like, well, there's just, you know, no lights to turn on in here but there's always a light to turn on. So I would love to hear what you're going to say no to and what you're going to say yes to, or if you're struggling with the whole concept. And I will see you in the next episode of It's Your Turn. Thank you for joining me for this episode of It's Your Turn. I've got resources and links in the show notes for you, but here's what's more fun. DM me on Instagram at Brenda Florida Coach. And let me know you listened to today's episode. I'd love to connect with you. And then share this episode with somebody who needs to hear it because I know you know somebody who needs to hear it. And I'll see you in the next episode of It's Your Turn.